Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today is the video that I spoke about that I was going to do. I've left it a bit late, it is um, currently, you know, kick-off day, the, the, the league starts today, the Premiership season is back, thank God, the real football is back, Celtic's campaign for nine in a row begins today, Rangers' campaign to try and stop nine in a row begins today, and uh, around the league there's just excitement from head to toe, you know, it's back, the Scottish Premiership 2019-20 season begins, and yes, my predictions are finally getting rolled out, it's my favourite video to do all year, I love seeing the comments section, this is when fans from every team gather around, we have the Celtic fans, the Rangers fans, the Ten Hamilton fans, we've got a lot here ready to voice their opinions and give me abuse for what I may say about their team and where I'm placing them in their predictions this season now. As I always say every year, don't take this seriously. I'm a fat twat who sits behind a camera trying my best to pass off a little bit of uh, knowledge. And um, some people just take it too far. Some people think that I'm actually, you know, God himself and I'm predicting exactly where teams are finishing. This is just my opinion. If you think your team's going to finish higher, then fair play to you. This is just my opinion. It may be well off. It might be right. If it's right, ha-ha if you slag me. If it's wrong, ha-ha to me. So here we go. I've got to get right in it because this is a long video, you know, 12 teams. And if I want to sp speak about each team for at least like two minutes, you're looking at a 22-minute video. But I want to try and fly through it. Uh, we're going to go from bottom to top as we always do every year. An interesting season. Will Celtic go and get nine in a row? Well, let's find out in my predictions video. I don't know if we should try it. We usually try it. And I'm going to I'm going to go for it again. I think I've done it last year. I've done it in a few videos. I'm going to go for a one take. I'm going to go for it. Let's do it. No cuts from 12 to 1. If we have to cut, we'll cut. But here we go. Starting at the bottom of the table, we'll talk about the relegation zone first. We've got St Mirren in at 12th place and Hamilton in at 11th place. Now, I think for the last three seasons, I have put Hamilton right at the bottom of the table. I have been dying to see them get relegated. Now, I think a lot of people have picked up on the channel by now. I'm not a big Hamilton man. Um, I'm actually quite against Hamilton. I'm just against Plastic Parks, first of all. Then I'm against clubs who are wasting a slot for bigger teams in this league. Hamilton, for me, are just such a nothing club. I'm so sorry for offending Hamilton fans, but it's true. And I've had them at 12th place for the last three years. But do you know what? I, every every time I do it, they, they manage to stay up. So this year, I'm going to going to predict that they're going to finish higher than 12th and hope that they will finish 12th this season. And even at that, I do actually believe St Mirren have got a weaker side. St Mirren and Hamilton both going under big changes um, over the, the summer. You know, two managerial changes there. Martin Cannon out of Hamilton. I think he's been gone a little while longer now as well. And um, Kearney out of... Was that, was that his name, Kearney? Out of St Mirren. Brian Rice coming in for his first managerial job at St Mirren. And I um, can't remember his name. The player coach from Alwa heading into to Hamilton. Forgot his name now. So two changes managerial-wise. And also I just believe the teams haven't really improved. Hamilton have went that way where they've made so many changes in and out that it's going to affect, I think, the overall chemistry of the squad. St Mirren have just lost some good players and haven't really brought in anybody. I think they've made three or four signings, but they're, they're nobodies. You know, they're players who might actually turn up and play really well for St Mirren, but it's the gambles. You know, you don't really know what you're getting. I don't know anything about them anyway for certain. The St Mirren scouts will know um, if they're going to be any good. But for me, I think St Mirren are a lot worse off than what they were ending last season. They started the season poorly. They ended up getting a new manager, obviously, um, Kelly coming in quite close to the start of the season. I think it was around September time um, that he came in after Jack Ross left previously before that in the summer. Um, and I think towards the end of the last season, they actually picked up quite a bit of momentum, started getting good results, and then Kelly decided to leave, and I think he's went back to the club he managed over in Ireland. Um, just not ideal. I think the, the momentum that did pick up has just been took all away now. Maybe it's fresh for St Mirren, maybe it'll work, maybe they'll actually get a higher finish in the table, I just don't see it happening. And Hamilton, just for me, are that club, they're always going to be around there, but will they manage to stay up yet again? That is the question, they always do, it's annoying, um, but we'll, see, we'll soon see. Heading into 10th place, I've got Livingston, who last season surprised us all. Last year I predicted them to finish rock bottom of the table, 12th place, and well, they shocked us. They um, started the season superbly, they had tremendous home form, their defence was incredible, but this year they're going into a season um, where they have lost a lot of their good players and actually could get relegated. I think I've been a bit nice to them, I think they could potentially be the team who are down at 12th and 11th, but I think the quality in the bottom four sides are really equal. Uh, I don't think there'll be a lot separating them. It was like last year, Dundee, yes, they were a bit, they fell off quite a bit. But don't remember the battle between Hamilton and St Mirren and Dundee for a long portion of time. They were so, so close. I'm expecting to see that again between the bottom three, four sides because there's just not any standout quality in either of the teams. But Livingston, who had such a phenomenal season last year, done all the right things defensively for a long portion of the season, then towards the end tailed off. Um, 
They've lost their three key players who were part of that great start to the season. They've lost their goalkeeper in Kelly. They've lost Hawkett to Hearts. And Dolly Menga uh, is gone. Dolly Menga is away on a two-year loan, which is madness. I don't I don't understand it. And Ryan Hardy's also gone as well, who was a, a good player. Um, four players, four key key players gone. And I don't really think they have replaced them. Um, and uh, there's got to be a, a battle for them this year to try and, you know, try and replicate what they achieved last season. Uh, obviously, a phenomenal job um, from the Livingston coaching staff last year to get that. And um, maybe they can repeat it again. Maybe they will work that miracle. But uh, I just don't see it happening. And they, they could finish 12th. They could. I think between 10th and 12th, it's very close. But I'm installing faith in Livingston to finish 10th. Heading on to 9th is the newly promoted Ross County, who I'm actually putting a bit of faith in last year. I put the newly promoted sides, Livingston and St Mirren, I think, in 12th and 10th. This year, Ross County, I'm giving them a 9th place finish. Um, momentum coming up. They had a fantastic season of the Championship. They were the standout winners. Um, I also believe they made some good signings um, through the transfer window, bringing in players like Blair Spital. Uh, a Blair Spittle, however you say it. Good players been brought in. I believe they've already got a solid core of a squad, not changing too much. And it's a, it's a squad, you know, that is that kind of quality that mingles around the bottom side of our table. Hence why they won the league quite easily last year. Ross County could go down as well very easily. As I said, these bottom four sides really don't have a massive gulf in quality between them. But I, I believe they've got that little bit of a fight in them. And... Uh, I'm, I'm supposing the Dingwall crowd will be happy to be back in the Premiership. Maybe more fans will flood to the stadium in the hope that they will have a good return to the, the Premiership. They don't have a derby this year. Inverness obviously still down in the Championship. But they've got a, a, a fresh team ready to fight in this league. And I believe they can replicate a bit of what Livingston done last year. Defensively, they have to be strong. They have to be tight. Um, but you know what? I, I, I have a little bit of faith in them. Ninth place, maybe generous. Maybe very generous. Maybe they will finish in the 11th or 12th spot. But... I'm going to put Ross County in ninth. Heading into eighth as we nearly round off the top, uh, sorry, bottom half of the table. We've got St Johnston. Really, it's the most bland club in the league. Um, do you know what? With, with no disrespect, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible when I say that. So Johnston just every year tend to do the same thing. They have a portion of the, ta the, the, the season where they are very good, very hard to beat, very organised. Tommy Wright has got things beaten. Um, they look as though they could finish in the top six. Then they go through a period of shit. And then they kind of pull it back a wee bit. Then they go to shit again. It happens every year. There's not much to say in St. Johnson. I think this is a, the same position as what they finished last season. I don't expect much to change. They've not changed much about their squad. Tony Watt has went out. They were talking about trying to bring Stevie May back. But I think he remains at Aberdeen. Um, honestly, St. Johnson just a very, very, you know, vanilla side. And... Um, I don't really know what to expect from the 8th place, I believe, is fair. And also, repeating their position within the table and me giving them the same place as what they finished last year is Gogsy, Motherwell, at 7th. I always called him Gogsy. Um, Motherwell, Stephen Robinson and, uh, what's his name? Keith Lasley. Is it Keith Lasley? Have remained the um, the coaching staff there who have had a very successful couple of years now at Motherwell. And honestly, I believe they could crack on maybe at the top six this year. I believe Stephen Robinson has done a tremendous job at, at replacing players when he's had to and building chemistry sides, sides that like, like to play together and play together well. Um, but will they be able to crack that top six? Maybe not, all depending on what happens um, between the sides, so I believe will tail off in the top six, which we'll get onto. But I believe seventh place is a safe option for them. Gogs will be rooting for them to get into the top six, I imagine. But I don't quite see it yet. But Stephen Robinson, don't get me wrong, he got them at two cup finals a couple of years back. He's brought in some good players of his own. He's done a lot of reinventing at Motherwell. This year, could we see a top six emergence for Motherwell? I'm putting them seventh. And we're going to do two takes because um, I, I, need a, I need a drink. Into the top half then, and I, I've just started and I'm going to sneeze, but we'll try and fight through it. Kilmarnock I have at 6th place, which is quite the fall from where they finished last season. They finished 3rd, obviously. A fantastic, a history-making, record-breaking season for the Ayrshire side as Steve Clark took them to what was an unbelievable feat of a 3rd place finish. But now Steve Clark is gone. He's became the national team coach. My camera screen thing has went off. I'm back. But Steve Clark is gone and Kilmarnock go through big changes. Now they've still got the kind of same core there to their side. Not much has changed. Um, which I believe will help them remain a top six side. But we've obviously seen the embarrassment of the knockout to Connors K, uh, K in the um, qualifiers for the Europa League which wasn't a great indication for what we might see this season. I'm not going to purely judge everything off that, though. You know, they're still getting into the things with a new manager. 
Losing Steve Clark is massive. It's not going to be easy to recover from. And I believe the start to their season is what's going to cost them from finishing higher than sixth place. Still got some great players in there. Watch out for Brophy. Watch out for the likes of Greg Taylor and Stephen O'Donnell. Great defensive players. They've got good players in there. Very good players. I've obviously lost players in such as Jordan Jones, but I still believe they're a top side in the league with that team that Steve Clark built. And if they remain um, with that same passion and that same, you know, kind of aggression in their team that they played with last season, they will get a top half finish. Fifth place, Aberdeen. Fallen again, I, who finished obviously fourth last season. Aberdeen, was it fourth? Was it fifth? No, I think it's fourth. Aberdeen, Derek McInnes' side is not improved. Um... I don't see much happening this season for Aberdeen. Um, they're kind of going backwards. They need to fix things. There's not much to say. I can't really say much about Aberdeen. They've been very boring. Um, and Derek McInnes needs to make changes. A lot of Aberdeen fans are getting frustrated, getting tired. They want things to change. N nothing's really changed this summer. Um, Stevie May remains at the club. James Wilson remains at the club, which I find surprising. Um, they need to change things up pronto. I'm giving them a fifth place finish. Might be harsh, but I don't see how they can do much better. Fourth place, we have got Hibs. Maybe I'm being generous, but do you know what? Hakenbottom pulled off a miracle last season after the nightmarish start under now Celtic manager, Neil Lennon. Um, last year, I backed Hibs to finish second. Oh, boy, was I wrong. And oh, boy, was I embarrassed. Um, this year, I'm going to go for a more safe, a more concise fourth place finish for Hibernian. They've still got a strong side there. They've brought back Scott Allen into the squad. Um, last year, I think losing John McGinn and Dylan McGeoch really did hurt them. But now I think they've got the likes of Stevie Marlin playing well. They've brought Allen back. And they've still got a good squad surrounding that. And Heckenbottom has built a, lot of, built a lot of momentum in that club. Finished the season very strongly last year. Saved them from, you know, finishing maybe even in the bottom half. Um, with how he performed when he came in as manager. So a lot of momentum at Hibs. A lot of things have been going right as of recent. And I believe that if they keep that up, um, they could have a strong season. Maybe even push on to finish third or whatever. Um, but I'm going to go for fourth place. Um... It's consistency what will kill Hibs. They do well against the big teams, then they fall against the small teams. They need to sort that out. I say the same thing every year about Hibs. I say that with Neil Lennon in charge, I say it now with Heckenbottom in charge. That's what they need to watch out for. If they can make Easter Road a fortress and actually win every game there or get good results there most weeks, they will finish high on this table. They will get European football, but that is what lets them down and Hibs need to sort it. Third place, I'm going for Hearts. Yes, maybe a shocker. Maybe you didn't expect it, but listen, hear me out. Stephen A. Smith has signed a permanent deal for Hearts. He's always been performing well for Hearts since he joined first on loan a couple of years back. They've signed a good defensive player in Hockett who joins the likes of Berra and Suter who are good enough as it is. They have got a strong man up front. A man. Not, not just a player, a man. They've got eight PUs up front. Uh, surrounded by other good players. Hearts have a solid team. And if Craig Levine can stop being so, I don't know, stupid, which is a very big ask. They can finish third this season. I hate Hearts. hate them with all my heart. But they've got a strong side. And I believe right now it is stronger than the likes of Hibs, Aberdeen and Kilmarnock. Maybe with just the addition of Hockett. Another great defensive player for what is a very defensive side. Craig Levine, we know what his tactics are like. He's a very defensive-minded manager. And if he can get this defence ticking and keeping out the goals, they can finish third. Maybe with very poor, very boring to watch football. But nonetheless, it will get them somewhere. So I'm going for Hearts and a third place finish. Maybe a shock or maybe you disagree with me. But um, I'm going to chance it and say Hearts for third. And now we're getting to the top two. Who will be winning the Ladbrokes Premiership? Well, it certainly won't be the team I have in second. And that is Rangers. Rangers are not going to win the league this year. I better not say it. That, that's going to get clipped now. That's going to get clipped. Keep the clip because I'm a, I, I don't. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I'm, I'm being generous. For the first time ever, I believe, I'm giving Rangers the second place prediction. Because why? Because they have improved. There's no denying that. They're a better side than what they were under Mark Warburton, under Pedro Cusinha, under Graham Murray. But they're still not Celtic. Celtic won the league by nine points last year. Could have been more. If Brendan Rodgers stayed at the club, it would have well been more. But we went through a lot of shit last year. Rangers fans are getting very high and mighty on the fact that Neil Lennon's in charge and they think that's guaranteed them the league this year. Neil Lennon has won three Premiership titles. He's took Celtic the last 16 of the Champions League. He's won the Scottish Cup. He's won the League Cup. Where is this, this, this idea that Neil Lennon's a nothing manager? Now, don't get me wrong, he wasn't my first choice. He was not my first choice as Celtic manager. I believe this year Celtic will win 9 in a row. I believe 10 in a row will be the hardest season out of all 10. Maybe quite an obvious thing to say. But I think this year we can still go win the league by 
nine points again. Our team has not fell back. It's went forward this time. I believe the last two years the team weakened. This year was strengthened. We brought in Christopher Julian. We brought in um, a new right back who might not be great, but is a player nonetheless. We've, we've, we've improved. We've had to improve. Griffiths is back. Scoring. Rangers, though. We're on second place Rangers. Rangers, yes, they also have improved. They have brought in some good, good players. By the looks of things, they are confident they can go and challenge Celtic for the title this season. And do you know what? Bring it on. I'm looking forward to a battle for the title if that's the case. But I just still don't believe Steven Gerrard's side has the consistent mentality to challenge Celtic right to the very end this season. The old firm games, yes, they mean a lot. And I believe maybe when we meet each other at Ibrooks in September, we could be looking at a Rangers win. There's no denying that. But that's not going to set the tone for the full season. Very early. Rangers' problem last season was those games in between Celtic and Rangers. Rangers went top of the table at Christmas. And then they fucked it. That's the kind of thing which will cost Rangers from being that predicted first place finish. And that's why I've got Celtic at first place finish. Celtic's mentality is strong and that's not going to change whether it's Brendan Rodgers or Neil Lennon in charge. They're still going to play for the title this year. Second place Rangers, first place Celtic. I don't see how Celtic are not the favourites in anybody's eyes to win the title this season. Rangers fans who claim Celtic's reign is over are blinded by their blue tinted spectacles. Because... There is still a gulf between the two sides. That gulf was reinstated and was shown yet again when we won a treble treble. And one summer is not going to change all of that. Rangers have improved. Things will be closer. Will they win the title in my eyes? No, they won't. If they do, hats off. I'll say it already so that I can save some of the embarrassment if they do win the title. But I am fairly confident that nine in a row will be coming to Celtic. Do I see a treble coming to Celtic again? Absolutely not. That is not what matters. Over the next two years, what matters is this. Two league titles. The Cups mean shaggle. Lovely bonuses. Don't get me wrong. I hope we do well in Europe as well. But the league titles, nine and ten, what we've been crying about for the last eight years is what matters. And this year, I believe firmly, we will go and we will win nine in a row. That is it for my league table predictions. If you're unhappy... Throw your comments down below. I can't be asked. Um, if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. And let me know your predictions for this season as well. And I'll see you all next time.